<laughs> Am I doing a video? Yeah. <laughs> That's the most ominous <laughs> two men staring at me. What's going on guys? Got a very special friend over in the garage today. It is Alex, and you know what that means. What have you got? Let's see it. Let's see this baby. It's a Tron light disc. No, I'm just kidding. It's a 3D <laughs> printed transmission adapter. Mock-up plate. I am excited to try that out, but we need to get the motor off the stand, which means we need to get up the engine hoist, and we need to take the cylinder head off, which is not even bolted down, which I found out by throwing it directly into the ground earlier today. Made a huge oil mess, of course, for the second time. Wasn't filming, which I'm glad for because then I would have to show it to you because it was that embarrassing. So we're gonna get this on the ground, we're gonna drag the bell housing over, and we're gonna see if this thing bolts both of them together. So this is a big, this is a big landmark in the project. Yeah, this is sure. huge. I'm really, really excited to get two things that shouldn't be made it together, made it together. might be thinking well that doesn't look very finished or that doesn't look very polished but um, all this is letting us know is what bolts we can use and if we're gonna run into anything major because we're just working off of theoretical draft drawings that we got from someone right. so, uh, we need to verify that and you're talking time. about the the TDI engine block CAD drawings that I gave you yeah. yeah yeah and also just things we might not know about the transmission that went through the 3d scan that we we're not aware of or clearances to slip a bolt through somewhere that we're not aware of that's why like this hole has two holes in it because we're going to be able to choose if we want to use those holes for alignment or if we want to use, you know, any sort of other fasteners or methods to attach it. If we want to dowel pin something, if we need to cut heads off bolts to make alignment pins. So you 3D printed this, right? Yes. What's Although, the, go ahead. What's the material? It's PLA. This 3D print relative to the time and effort I put into my own 3D printing is the equivalent of you showing me a cell phone photo with you being a professional photographer. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about this print quality, but yes, it is 3D printed out of PLA on a very cheap print. Well, it's not actually going to be used for anything except mock-up, so that makes right. a lot of sense. It doesn't really matter. No. I would have to say that probably at least 50 to 60% of the time that you spend doing projects is looking for things or going to the hardware store. We don't have bolts to bolt the adapter plate to the block. We're gonna run to the hardware store and uh, by the time we get back, which will be instantaneous for you and forever for us, we'll have bolts. You left it on, you absolute amateur. It wasn't on when I put it in the box. It's an on-off switch. I know, but for a I didn't, reason. I didn't do it's it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna use this whole thread length because we know that it works. Thirty-one point three, which is about an inch and a quarter. Convert to inches. Work. Okay. Yeah, one point two five inches. One point two five inches, and we need. And then we need plus the thickness of the adapter plate, which I think is fifteen millimeters. So that's gonna be. Yep. Okay. Half an inch. Is that in your brain? Half an Is inch, it right here? An inch and a quarter equals 1.5 inches. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. It is squeaky snow cold. Oh, you already got my heated seat on for me. True friend. Do you think this was designed before everyone drove SUVs, which is why the angle is off on the inside of the container? <laughs> I don't think they were really thinking that hard about it, to be honest. <laughs> All right, onwards into good customer service land. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on? Right here, what do we need, 12? M12. Here, just hold this next to the... Here. Where's the nut? Trust me. We're gonna see the thread pitch. Yeah, look at that, great. It's <laughs> perfect. Now we get to find out how good I am at interpreting 
drawings that say a bunch of things I don't understand because they're in German. <laughs> so we, uh, in lieu of dragging the engine block down with the transmission, I just gave Alex a PDF that I found on the internet. <laughs> and we're about to find out if that guy, whoever drew that, knew what he was doing. He did. He did? Yes. All right. I'm just going to test to make sure they all actually line up. Nice. Sick! Look at that, that fits. We need four, that's all we need. Yep. And that's a, we need a nut on the other side of that, I think. Wait. Oh, it, they have threads and, it had threads and it was a dowel pin. We are going to have to use these four. So we're gonna use these four, I think. We're just gonna put a through bolt. Yeah. And I really think they should have point with the end of the car next to the board. So, in 3D printing, you can use standard drill tap sizes for bolts. It's just like if you have a 10 millimeter bolt, just put an 8.8 millimeter hole, and then you can self tap into it. You just have to make sure there's enough material inside of the 3D printed part connecting to the bore. So it has to be enough infill or enough shells. I made all these holes for an M10 bolt. They're 8.8 millimeters in diameter. So we're just gonna take this bolt and run it through all of them to basically tap every hole. Um, and then we'll put the trans on and just use this to connect it just so we can look at it for now. My hope is that that is strong enough that we'll be able to put the transmission and the engine block in the truck and it will be able to support the weight of doing that. Do you think? No. No. I can print you one that will. Okay. It would take four days to print. So here's, a, okay. So ideally then, we find out if the bell housing bolts to that, and then yep. we just get one machine and we're done. Yeah. And we don't worry about doing the other Correct. thing. Yeah. Okay. I would just wait until this is all. I would just wait until you have the trans and the engine connected and then make it fit in the car. Right on. I just didn't know how strong this. Uh, it actually was. probably would work for a while, um, and then it would catastrophically fall apart and drop all your shit on the floor. I can tell you how I know that. <laughs> okay. I think. Ideally, we would just have two engine hoists, and we could just hold this and hold that. There, now we are, are really very hairless. I think. Oh, there it is. I think it did, the input shaft and the transmission did go right into the center of the crank. Which is good for my credentials. <laughs> How's it look? It's looking pretty good. So we're going we're going to put uh, as many bolts in as we can and test every hole to make sure that they're all actually where we think they are. Um, and then once that's done, we'll take all of it apart and I can start measuring up for what we need to do for the bearing and what we need to do for the flywheel depth. Because um, now we know that this actually kind of fucking works. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Which is sweet. So there's a bunch of stuff that projects like this might, it might seem like I'm going really slow, but there's a bunch of things you might not always catch. Like for example, the fact that the deck steps up right here for absolutely no reason at all. Um, probably just to be flush with whoever designed the head. Um, stuff like that will catch you out because you'll go to machine this and be like, yeah, can you get that thing done for me? And I'll go and machine this and then it'll hit there and we'll be like, shit, now I have to go back and do Sit there with a file or a grinder and just make yeah, it work. Yeah, so we should just get a full understanding of what we can and can't do first. So that's what we're doing. And these are the kind of moments where, you know, Alex put a lot of work into this. I know he has a lot of time into this. And when you bring it over here and you put the bell housing on the engine and it just works and everything bolts up exactly where it's supposed to. Not that I didn't have faith in you, but it is still really satisfying to see it come together. I don't know if I have faith in you. <laughs> I've never made a fucking adapter before. So yeah, I screwed up on this. Um, we had talked about the starter being bolted to effectively to the trans, right? Um, which means it has to be sandwiched with the adapter ring. And I 
totally thought after being mesmerized by the German drawings that the starter <laughs> was here because I was paying attention to it for orientation, which I did get the orientation correct, but I put the starter in the wrong spot. There's three main projects. There is getting these bolts to line up, which we've just done, so that's great. The second project is the starter, so we know now how to do that. And then the third project is going to be getting the, the clutch distance uh, correct on the flywheel that you're going to have made. We're going to take measurements for that now, even though I already have them in the scan as well, because we moved the throw-up pairing um, when we scanned it. And honestly, I think the next time I come back here, I will have a printed version of the final piece. So what's awesome is seeing this. Seeing it all and being able to visualize what's going on versus trying to do like all the mathematical equations in your head, right? You, where you just you're trying to do it all and, and picture it all, which is which is cool. But actually seeing it is great. So we kind of have figured out what we're gonna do for uh, the flywheel, which actually now that you see it is way easier than you would have thought. Yep. It is face of the block plus or minus the distance to the crank compared to the Isuzu motor plus the adapter plate. That's it. That's the distance. That's the thickness of the flywheel way easier than I thought it was going to be now that you're able to visualize it and see it in your head. Yeah, and we already have the bolt pattern for the crank because of that PDF drawing. Um, so yeah, we're like a ring gear, a custom flywheel away from having this all actually fit together as it was meant to be. But as you just said, um, if you guys are like at home wanting to start a project like this, the best way to do it is just in stages. And my friend Josh Walling taught me that and it's been super helpful. Like, I, you know, if I was 18 years old, I would want to design this piece and have it be like super grandiose and all the lightweight pockets and everything like that and then bring it to you and have it be like, wow, this is sick, and then find out all the things that don't work. Right. And my 23-year-old self goes, well, I'm just going to make a literal circle. And 23-year-old <laughs> self, like it's like he's some sort of ancient man. <laughs> <laughs> just, now that I've been taught the ways of taking your time a little bit, um, just having a circle, even though it looks dumb, and just figuring out the bolts, lets us sit here and go, okay, we're going to run into this problem, or we're going to run into this problem. And breaking things up into steps like that is super important. I mean, by the end of this, we'll have this one, the next iteration, and the metal one. And seeing that all forward, instead of just going, I want to make this fit the first time, and that's my goal, is really a better way to do things. Alex, thank you. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We will see you next week. I have no idea what's going on. I'm not sure if Alex is gonna have that stuff done or not, but we have plenty of stuff to do on the Trooper to keep everybody busy. See you then. Bye.